All right, so far we have been working on our proving ground, putting our fantasy creature into a fantasy landscape. And we've done six videos so far. The last video was posting the images that are required for it. You can always find that under playlists in the NLC Arts Lab YouTube channel. You can always get to there by going to links from the homepage. Right. But it's a public channel, so you can also just go to YouTube and say NLC Arts Lab. And then you want to look at the playlists. To skip to that assignment, we can go to the assignments link from the homepage, go right to it where we post our proving ground number one, our creature in a landscape. And we see the directions. And most importantly, because this is a proving ground, one of four we'll do for the semester, we have a pretty detailed rubric. And in order to earn your creative problem solving badge, you need to meet each of these rubrics with full marks. So far, we have done the second one, which was we placed our PNG creature file onto a landscape background image in a way that utilized a common light direction and accommodated for the angle of your creature's anatomy. So if you've done that fully, both aspects of that, you'll get full marks. So let's see. What does that look like? Scroll down to the bottom, or where I posted mine, and we post an image that shows our creature neatly cut out as its own layer asset, placed into the environment, and then lit in a way that feels consistent with how the environment is lit. That would be cast shadows underneath, highlights coming from similar directions. If the light of the background is warm, you want the light on your creature to be warm. If the shadows are cool, you want the shadows of your creature to be cool. And the main thing was to actually understand professional ways to do this, to integrate without re, redoing your creature or without what's called uh, destroying your pixels for your creature. So we did that with what are called non-destructive overlay layers. So the second requirement so that I understand how you did the light direction is to also post an image where you turn your overlay layers to normal mode. So I'm going to review that with you since we've had a weekend. I have everything in my Proving Ground 1 folder. I'm still working on it, so I'll mark it as yellow. And I'm going to open up my PSD. And because I want to open it in Photoshop, I can just double click. So if we look at our layers, we learned a bunch of different skills to kind of improve our creature and to improve our landscape by interrogating both of them and really trying to have them integrate together. One skill we learned was texture overlays, kind of putting this extra texture in and then playing with it to help build the scene. What's really great about texture overlays is you can also do direct adjustments on them. So for instance, I can push the hue saturation and colorize that texture overlay to be whatever kind of hue I want that might help glaze everything together. But we tend to overdo it, so that's why we often take the opacity way down. And sometimes we might do things like, here, let me warm that up, like play with its blending mode. So instead of it being on normal mode, we might, I'm going to warm this up a little. There we go. Uh, it's too green. Let's see, image. So I might set this instead of to normal to something like soft light or pin light. And it will still help to kind of glaze everything very subtly. So I'm going to gonna go ahead and add that one in. Here was another texture overlay we used. Takes out a lot of those sharp edges, you know, so it feels like there's a shared atmosphere. Here's another one in the corner there. So many options. I improved the landscape, I think, by taking out some elements that maybe weren't as necessary. 
And then how did I play with the lighting of the creature? So this is what's called a non-destructive overlay layer. I marked them as gray and I marked my character layer as green. So even if I turn my character layer off, you can see where my character shaped non-destructive overlay layer is kind of a ghost there. And it shows where I, I dodge the highlights. So how can we really show where we did it? We're going to click on that overlay layer once we've saved it as our project. So I'm going to save this as a copy. First, I can save it as a PSD, you know, just file save. But then to post it to Canvas, I say save as a copy once I'm happy with it. And I change that format to JPEG so I can really control the online format. I'll replace the original because I added that warmth. And I'm going to set it so that with a preview on the JPEG options, it's just under five megabytes. That is usually what we want to post to Canvas, even though this is a large, large file. JPEG compresses it so much, we can fit it online pretty easily. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn both of these overlay layers to normal mode. By turning it to normal, you see all the grays, and then you see my, my dodging and burning on the gray. Now, I'm going to keep its opacity at the same opacity that I'm actually using it, because what's great about doing a non-destructive overlay is like a texture overlay, you can set the opacity down if you burned it and dodged it a little too much because it's not hurting the pixels of your creature layer at all, your hero asset. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the background. I'm going to set that to normal mode. And that shows me what I did with the non-destructive overlay layers. And the only things not affected by them were these things in front of them, my immediate foreground. I also have my texture overlays on, and they're going to show up on top of it. So that will also show me if you used any texture overlays. And all you're required to do is use at least one non-destructive overlay layer with some dodging and burning so that you've shown you know how to not only change the lighting direction to match, but you also know how to do it in a way that doesn't hurt your original asset. Okay. All right. So let's save that. So in order to post this, I have to save it as a copy. And very importantly, I'm saving it as the same format. And so if I saved it now, it would overwrite my old one. So I need to give it a new name. So I'm just going to call it my overlay. And it's going to replace my old overlay one, just because I did that slight difference with the texture, the texture fill. But they're, they're really similar. And now, here are my two. So these are the ones I just saved. That's my overlay. And this is my finished creature scape. And to post that, to edit if you've already started, everyone's going to be editing their posts. I'm going to do what I never want you to do when you resubmit. I'm going to delete past ones because that was just at the end of last class. Whenever you resubmit a project, I want you to add them to the ones you had already submitted so I can see the improvements you made. These improvements are so subtle, it's not worth the extra memory in Canvas. But it's to, the video is to remind you how to post them. So I kind of shrink it to go with my name. And then I'm going to post my final. Remember, it's the JPEGs that go onto Canvas. We're not using PNGs for this because we don't need to support transparency. And PNGs take up more room than is necessary. All right, the next step. I can hit save. I've met one of the criteria for the rubric. This one. I've tried to do my best to match the lighting direction and the angle of the anatomy. How do I tell if you've matched the angle of the anatomy to your creature? If the creature actually looks like it fits in your environment with its body posture, right? And where it's synced into the layers and all of that. All right, so the next, next requirement 
is did we accurately identify the resolution, pixels per inch, and physical format, aka the print size, aka means also known as, while identifying which of the two main types of digital art resolution your creature scape is sized for. So what does that mean? These do not show that, right? That's because I don't want to give it away too much, but you'll see it in the past examples right here, because you need to be able to apply this information and understand it. You'll see what that means. It means that you have to identify not just your physical inches, but the resolution at those inches. And then identify for yourself whether that's good enough for print resolution or for screen resolution. Right? Print resolution is a higher standard of use. So if I look at mine, where I posted it, how do I get that information? How do I learn the size? Because you can't tell in Canvas just by looking at it. You have to open it up in a raster program. So I have mine open in Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and set these overlays back to overlay mode. And save it. But how can I check its resolution and its physical dimensions? And I'm always reminding you to do this so that you're not working at a bad resolution. Where do we go? Image. So we go up to the top, find image, and then what do we do? Image adjustments would be to change the lighting or the coloring, but here we just want to know what the pixel resolution is. So canvas size will tell us the, the physical dimensions and in inches. But yeah, canvas size is where we want to grow it from there. So this doesn't show us the resolution at all, right? But it does show us the physical inches. But yeah, the better tool is image, image size. Not because we want to change anything, but because we want to understand what our pixel resolution is. And there, make sure it's set to inches, not pixels. It shows me my image is 17 by 14 and a half. You know, you can round. So I'm going to make note of that. So I got to put that into Canvas. So it's 17 inches wide. You always put width first when you're doing art formats. And 14.5 inches tall. And then its resolution in pixels per inch is 350. So that's how you learn that. Yours might be very different. Remember, this is after cropping it to your desired composition. And now I'm going to edit my post. And just like those past examples, I'm going to write underneath it that it is 17 and then inches is quotations, you know, two apostrophes, 17 inches wide. And then you use an X by 14.5 inches tall at, and I like to use the at symbol for this, 350, and then what's the abbreviation for pixels per inch? PPI, pixels per inch. Now, that's one half of it. <laughs> Not to belabor this point, but we have to be detailed when we're doing these proving grounds. So did I accurately identify the resolutions, pixels per inch, and the physical format? Yes. But that's only one half of this criteria. I also have to name the digital resolution type. So this is making sense of your data, right? So if I know it's 17 inches wide by 14 and a half inches tall at 350 pixels per inch, I am asking myself, is this equal or bigger than 8 inches by 10 inches at 300 pixels per inch? Because what is 300 pixels per inch and at 8 by 10 or larger? That is standard minimum print resolution. So if it's equal to this or bigger than this, you don't need to type that. That means that.